Welcome to Random Acts, the late night TV show that transports you out of your home and into the minds of musicians, writers, animators, and every other kind of artistic human we could find. We've asked our favorite creative types to hit us up with three minute doses of their most out there imaginings, and the results make for a very potent mix. I'm Zari Ashton. Consider me the sociable travel rep to your up for it tourist. I'll be hooking you up with all the off-road delights my resort has to offer. And for no extra fee, I'll give you the skinny on the tiki bar where shit gets really weird. In the club tonight, we summarize all human existence in under three minutes. We bring synchronized swimming back into fashion, where it should be in my opinion, and let a psychotic animated panda do some unspeakable things to our brains. I needed a nice cup of hot milk after that one. And by hot milk, I do mean whiskey. Our first short tonight is from a morbidly funny British-Austrian duo, Susan Young and Paul Venninger, and it's called Dead Reckoning. Susan and Paul use live stop-motion capture to essentially walk us through our lives to our final resting place. For an existentialist like me, the subject of the inevitability of death in this film isn't so much a terrifying prospect as a comforting one, weirdly. Time to put on your sensible swimming cozies and frictionless silicone swimming cap. Grab a nose clip. Come dive with me. We're gonna rule the pool. Synchronized swimming is one of the Olympic disciplines that effortlessly straddles the worlds of sport and art. A bit like one of my other competitive favorites, dressage. I mean, it's horses dancing, isn't it? It's genius. The video for this spiky and sexy track from electro soul artist Ceramic captures the strength and harmony of Katie Clark and Olivia Federici in a gorgeous aquatic dream. These girls are seriously in formation. Different life and time, I'll be yours, you still be mine. Even though we chose a separate ways, I know 
Whatever you do, whatever you say, whenever you need me, I'm always right behind you, baby. Never beside you, baby. Never showed all the cards we had. The case is closed, no turning back. It doesn't matter if we felt the same. Oh no, we don't need the proof, we don't need the blame. You just got to believe me. Uh, you're always right beside me, baby. I never be happy, baby. Nirvana legend Kurt Cobain once sang that it's okay to eat fish because they don't have any feelings. Fine sentiments, but what about the facts? I love you, Kurt. But did you know that we share 85% of our DNA with fish? It's experimental animator Stephen Sabotnik who's really underlined that for me. Strange Fish is his hand-drawn map that extends beyond our human ancestors. His naive line drawing is extremely simple on one level, but extremely complex on another, just like the subject it explores, evolution. One. Two.
five. You can't really say exactly why something provokes the response that it does. There's not a lot of rationality I can apply to this dark provocation from animator Shen Ji and his 2D panda. This film is like the scab that you want to scratch and then do and then you can't decide how you feel about the open wound staring up at you. It's about a soldier and his violent encounter with the statue of Venus and I really do still have to sleep with the light on after seeing this short. But being challenged is part of what good art is all about, right? So on that score, Panda definitely delivers.
artist Bedwyr Williams can hardly ever be relied upon to turn in something that feels overly traditional. And he stays true to form and goes against type in this next piece, Tiramore. It's a single, constantly evolving matte painting that changes subtly as the voiceover from Bedwyr himself brings the painting to life. It's probably been a while since Channel 4 showed a three minute take without any fancy edits, but just don't adjust your set, okay? It's, it's, it's all part of a plan. A songwriter once wrote a song about this city. A song to be sung at a piano. A heartfelt emotional song with a chorus that was almost shouted out. He sang about the feelings he experienced looking over the city at dusk and how the place could lift him up. As if it was his big brother or a friend that had been with him since he was a young boy. He described flying kites with his friends on the mountain about running down the slopes towards the lights of the town as it got dark, about kissing a girl on the shore of the lake as thunderclouds rolled in. It was popular with the people who lived in the city, and often, if the song came on in a bar, people would join in. People who took music seriously and discussed it in a serious way were critical and unkind about the song, saying that the city was far too young for someone to start writing such songs about it. And that most of the sentiments about the city were borrowed from songs and poems about other, much older cities. This is a unique city, someone said. It really is. But it's not ready to be written about yet. I have fillings in my teeth that are older than this city, a prominent music writer wrote. Mawkish, shallow end trivia another said. I will build a city here, where we stand, a man standing at the edge of the lake had proclaimed some decades earlier, nodding silently to himself. The engineers and architects in high visibility jackets standing around him winced at the time, because they felt uncomfortable to hear him say such a thing. These weren't modest men themselves, and they didn't doubt at all that he was a man that got things done. But how pompous to talk like that, they all thought, like a Roman general, or someone convinced that they would be seen as a pioneer in the future. The shyest of the architects, a man too shy even to sing in his own car, considered as he drove home that evening, what if all those remembered as great people through history had actually been as embarrassing as this grandiloquent individual? The songwriter might have been better off writing a ballad about this self-confident land developer, because some 18 months after saying, I shall build a city here, he was killed by a sudden jet of wet concrete, bursting out of badly constructed plywood shuttering at the base of what was going to be a spa and wellness center. Sometimes a creative idea might need megabucks to make it look good. And sometimes an idea is just so clever you can make it on a shoestring. Literally. New filmmaker Chris Pugh took string, red wool to be precise, and used it to craft a powerful but playful metaphor for freedom of choice.
we filled the creativity collection box for another week. Thanks for your donations. It'll come back to you in the next life. Or even just next week if you tune in. Be not feared. Oh!